Welcome back to the channel, my name is Abel and we are back with Football Manager 2020 and the promotion project with our new club Ingolets Petrove in the Ukrainian First Division. We have gone from the UK to the Ukraine, from Inverness to Petrove and we've got our first competitive match today. We are against Gynik Krivivi Ri. I'm going to butcher so many pronunciations in this uh, segment of the uh of this series because yeah i've got no clue about how to speak ukrainian or say anything so this is going to be an absolute mess but hopefully you enjoy it and let's see if we can uh, do some stuff with this new club we are in fifth place and um, we've got to march um as i said last time we joined in december because the ukraine have such a long winter break uh we didn't have a game for a good three months so uh, we had a january transfer window to get through i did bring in a couple of new players uh and play some friendlies but this is our first competitive match today hopefully we can get onto a winning start and as always if you're enjoying the series and the videos drop a like down below leave comments and if you haven't done so already or if you're new do consider subscribing and turning on notifications and let's jump into the video so we had a look at the squad last time and it's not a bad squad it was a little bit thin and I've done a little bit of work to bring in some players. Um, it doesn't look like there's really much of a limit on loans. There's a limit on foreign loans, but like domestic wise, it looks like we have as many as we want. We've got a number of players uh, on loan uh, from Zoria, who's a senior affiliate that we have. So uh, it doesn't look like we've got many restrictions because we have five, six, seven, eight. We have eight players in on loan, and I think most of them. Probably about five of them are from Zoria. So I don't think there's much in terms of restrictions there. But the squad's not too bad. I think we've covered a couple of little issues we had, especially with um, some wide players. I think the right side of midfield needed um, an extra player. Uh, and uh, yeah, we have made a few signings. So I'll show you those now. Um, there's been some departures. Alexander Kozak is one of them. He's a striker that didn't really look too good. He was like two star, two and a half stars. Uh, he's gone to Menage, not Nicky Menage, uh, but uh, went for no money. We could have got a fee for him, but his contract was running out and he didn't have long to go. Uh, if we had got any money, it would have been tuppence. So he went for nothing in the end. A couple of players left on loan. Um, one was at the start of the season, but Artem Kozlov has uh, left on loan. A player that's got... A little bit of potential. So you can see the five players that came in on loan from Zoria. Um, and we got three players in on loan and we paid some money for a wing back as well. We did just about to get these guys in the van. Um, had to move around a bit of wage budget and scouting budget to try and make to make this work. Because we didn't really have money. The, the team was like almost a million pounds in debt. The board and the, like the higher ups have pumped some money into the club to try and help that. But we're still pretty heavily in debt and we can't really afford to be spending money on players so let's show you the four players that i've brought in starting off with dimitro shamic who is a right winger on loan from Kolos kovalivka um two and a half star current ability but five star potential much like i've been saying for the team in turkey and for the scottish um team for inverness 12s and 13s are sort of what we're looking for here uh, technically he's not fantastic physically he's pretty quick some of his attributes are increasing he's got a decent work rate he's not bad off the ball his crossing's not too bad either but he's not a very good dribbler so early crosses could be the way to go if we use this guy we can go with the hit early crosses vladislav veleten um i'm not sure what the apostrophe means after the end but i'm going to go with that for now uh, he is on loan from dynamo kiev we're not paying any of his wages for this one so that's a good signing three stars again for the right hand side just to try and help things out physically very good very determined with some good flair and some 12s and 13s in the technicals, which is what we're looking for. Not a bad dribble of the ball either. I think as long as they're yellow, that's okay for this level. Not too bad. Razvan Trif was the only player that we spent money on. He's a Romanian left wing back. And uh, again, doesn't look too bad. Three and a half star current ability and uh, earning £400 a week. So it's the only player that we've actually spent some money on. And he looks pretty well rounded actually for this level. He's got a bit of an injury at the moment, out for a couple of weeks at the very least. So not going to see him for a little while. But yeah, he looks like a decent player for the level. And lastly, on loan from CFR Clues, is central midfielder uh, Chartelin Itu. Again, no idea about pronunciation, but but again, this guy looks pretty good. Again, he's determined, physically pretty well balanced and some good technicals in there as well. 11s and 12s. I don't know how this league compares to the other leagues we've been in, um, but 11s and 12s seems to be the things we're looking for. But um, let's have a look at the Ukrainian first league and see where this league ranks. And it's 54th, which I think is lower than Turkey, but higher than Scotland. Let's have a look. So Ukrainian first league 54. The Turkish first league uh, is currently 46th. Um, that did drop from 43rd. 
and the Laverick Championship is at 58. So that has risen a few places as well. So we're kind of in between Turkey and Scotland at the moment. And uh, we are, you know, one of the top half teams in the division. If we have a look at our general thing, it says media prediction third. And at the moment we're fifth. In fact, we've actually risen to second, which is good because second place will get you promotion. So there are basically big things from us, but there's only nine games left in the season. So what we're going to be doing, because if we get promotion, this is going to be a very short um, time we're going to be spending with this club, only two months. We're going to play every single game on camera. We're going to play all nine on camera. So today we're taking on Guernick and then we're going to do double live comms until we finish so there's going to be the next four videos will all have two games we're going to play every single one of these nine games on camera so hopefully you'll be here for the ride just because there's so little time left of the season but the friendlies didn't go too badly we did lose uh, but that was more about fitness and anything but a bit disappointing because they're like fourth tier i think uh, but we beat arsenal kivshia we beat Dnipro, we beat our um, second team, and we drew with Metalurg. I think that is everything covered, so let's go into the map preview. Let's see how we've set up, and uh, let's see if we can get a good result in our first game. Now, we're looking at basically a 4-4-1-1 with uh, Valletta and the winger pushed on a little bit more. The midfield, like, at the moment, there's central midfielders, but we could go deep line playmaker and... Uh, I don't know, maybe this is Zala or something. Um, what is Terenziev's best role? He is central midfielder, but he's not bad as a Zala. That's pretty good. Uh, Vantic on the left, can't really play a bit further up. He can, but it's a little bit... It's all right. He can play a bit further. Let's go for a 4-2-3-1. It's, it's symmetric. It, it helps. Popov, not really the ideal player to be playing at left back because Zayats has got a bit of an injury. Uh, and then you've got Bilan, who's not very good. So left back probably needs a little bit of work. Actually, Farteyev is more of a natural left back. So I think I'm going to stick with him. And he's got a little bit of a link up with Vantuk as well. The two midfielders have a link. Holovko and Azizov have a link. Or Azizov, sorry. So that's okay. We only get seven subs. So we're going to have to try and sort out a bench. Let's just filter out the unavailable players just so we don't end up seeing them. I think that will probably do. Um, it's okay. Some players need fitness still because they haven't played a lot of games, but there's only like a few of them. Um, Shedri is close to returning from injury, so I'll, I'll play some games from the reserves probably just to get that fitness up. Dorinin is a player that we're trying to sell. We've offered him out. We've put him on the unwanted, but hasn't attracted any interest. We'll see how this goes. Um, it's the first game. We're going with a sort of custom wing play. We do have a second tactic, which is more of a possession-based style because I'm not sure how these guys do in terms of possession. I'm not actually sure what our philosophy was. Um, club vision. Uh, just work within the wage budget and sign players to sell for a profit. So we're not expected to play any sort of style, it seems. That's good, because we're not really limited to what we can do. So I think we'll we'll stick with this wing play. We've got the possession-based style as well, if we do end up winning possession a lot more and keeping the ball. We're going to try and go for a bit of a wide play here and see how it goes. I never know what to do with my hair. I really need a haircut. Like I'm trying to sort of sweep it over, but it's it's been washed. So it's it's there's, there's no product in it or anything, but... We're just going to leave it as it is. Um, much like Turkey, I'm not going to recognise any players here, I don't think. And there's actually a fair few regens in this one. I've got no idea how this is going to go. I actually have not got a clue. Um, but let's say uh, oh, we're favourites, apparently. Um, give the fans a performance to cheer for. And make me proud on our first game. Come on, that's our first competitive match in charge of Inglitz Petrove. Let's see if we can make it a win. Bit of confusion about whether it's Ingulitz or Ingulitz, because... It's only ever Ingolets, I think. In Ukrainian it is, but in English it's an H, not a G. So not quite sure what that means. We've got a lovely red and yellow kit. And the badge is red and yellow as well. We need to give a name to the guy on the badge. I, I feel like he needs a name. Because, yeah, he, he's a... I don't know if he's a mascot or whatever, but... Not sure how this is going to go. Fokin. Oh, it's in the goal. It's a goal. 15th minute of the game. We take a 1-0 lead. That, that would seem to go very slowly. How have we got the speed set? It is on my usual slightly faster. It just seemed a little bit slow to me. I don't know what it was. Um, but yeah, we're having a good look at our stadium as well. I saw a photo, right? I was looking up the club to try and learn a few bits. And there was a photo of their away end. Because they, as I, I think I mentioned last time, they were runners-up in the Ukrainian Cup. They lost to Shakhtar. I think it was Shakhtar. And their away end was like probably about 50 seats in a cage. And I'm like... There is no way 
the away fans would be like in there. But I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is true. I have no idea. We've got a set piece here. We're starting this game very well. And a header by Fokin does not hit the target. But a solid start. We have a goal. And uh, we've yet to see a shot from Giernik. I'm not going to try and pronounce any other words. Giernik is what they're going to be called from now on. As uh, Tim Jenko, their goalkeeper, uh, holds on to the corner ball. Here is a Sakatsky for the away side for Giernik. Goes for goal. Uh, not a great effort. I haven't literally seen how the guys are doing so far. Like who the top scorers are, who the best performers are. Switch of play. Here's Fabiano, the right back again. Um, for a fullback defender, he's quite far forward as a so effort by, I think, Terentjev it was. Didn't really threaten the goalkeeper. Half time, we've dominated the match. Um, we've got two thirds of the possession and we lead 1 0. I'm going to say things are going well, but you're capable of better. And you know what? Because we've got so much of the possession, let's try and control possession. Uh, but not with a 5-3-2. We're going to go back with this 4-2-3-1 again. Sticking with Kurenkov as that central attacking midfielder, which I've not had a lot of luck with, especially with the narrow diamond when I managed Sheffield United because we ended that season horribly. And I've been reading a few things about how a lot of people have been struggling with narrow formations in this game. So maybe narrow diamonds are really not the formation to go with in the, especially in FM20 because it seems like a lot of people are having some bad luck with them. Kurinkov did sell up the goal, so that's not too bad, actually. Demand more. Let's see if we can get a second goal here. We're having a very quiet 20 minutes or so in the second half. Nine shots on four on target, though. Van Tuk's going to come off. He's a little bit tired, so we're going to replace him, and it's going to be Tikachenko, I think. Um, is it? Yeah. Going to drop him slightly deeper, though. Um, leave him as the wing-back attack. A uh, winger attack, sorry. And we're going to drop Valetin as well. Just go for a 4-4-1-1. And see if we can get a second goal here. Let's go a bit more positive as well. We're dominating possession. We've had 70%. And I'm a bit disappointed to not have scored more than one goal in this game. Other than that goal, it's not been great. We haven't had a great deal of chances. Despite dominating possession. Right, we've got three minutes left. We're going to make um, some more changes. I don't know how many changes we get. Because I'm sure I read something that said that we get five subs. I might have completely read it wrong. But let's see. Um... Zelizko, um, leave him as a Mazala, Holovko for Popov. Okay, I think we can make like five changes. No, that's all we can do really. All right, we'll make four. We don't need to make five. Let's see if we can get a second goal. We've not long left. It is going to be a win to kick off our career, but it wasn't a fantastic game. Um, we got the goal. We dominated possession. Didn't do much more with it really. So could have won by more. Um, and they're saying disappointing as well. So... I'm going to say don't get complacent. I'm satisfied with the win. That's fine. But it was just a it was just a bit of an anticlimax. Like we started really well, but then nothing else ever came of it. We didn't really create much more. We had one clear cut chance. The one chance of the game was our goal and it was Fokin's goal. That was the only chance of the game. So a bit disappointing really. But we have three points. We've got a win in our first game. So that's good enough for me. Although it was a little bit rubbish. There is a good chance that we can still get the promotion though and finish top because um, last time we checked we were only seven points uh, behind the leaders and that has now been shrunk to five. Elviv drew with Bukovnia, uh, Kolos also drew, Balkani drew, Miokolev drew and we won. So we made up lots of ground there. We're still fifth but we're just a point behind Balkani and Mikolev. We're two behind Kolos, five points behind Elviv with eight games to go. And uh, if things continue the way they are, then we could get a very quick promotion. This could be a very short spell in Ukraine. And as I said, we're going to be playing all nine of these games on camera. So next episode will be the next two games. And it will be Dinaz away from home. Dinaz, I don't know why I put a near on the end. Uh, and then we host a Balkani in the game after that. Dinaz and Balkani. Uh, Dinaz are 12th. Balkani are third, so we could be ahead of them, or we could overtake him with that. Let's actually have a look at how people are doing. Anokin actually is a top scorer with 12 goals. Uh, and he is... He's got potential. So he's been playing, even though he's only got two stars. And he's actually been doing well. So maybe we should be playing him a bit more. Um, he's joined the Dnipro at the end of the season, because there's a lot of people that have joined other clubs on free contracts. There's been a lot of Bosmans happening. One, two, three, four, five six 
Yeah, six at the very least. So, uh, yeah, we're going to lose a few players, I think. Um, but, yes, we are going to be playing the next two games in the next episode. So, hopefully, you will uh, join me for that. But for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, thank you for watching. I forgot how to do my own outro. If you enjoyed today's video, drop a like down below. Leave comments. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new, then do consider subscribing and turning the notifications. And this is going to be an interesting handful of games. Like... I've never joined a team mid-season. I've never, ever done it before. So, yeah, this is something something I've never done before. Uh, much like the whole series, really. I've never done a journeyman before. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. And this could be a very short stay in the Ukraine. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you soon. Goodbye.